Hey, first go Joe Mentors, guys, and we back again. Yes, sir. Welcome once again, guys. In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about technical analysis. Yes, guys, after six years of accumulating knowledge in the Forex market, we're gonna be teaching you guys how to find those snapper entries, how to scalp your trades. Next week, we're gonna be covering sessions, and for this week, guys, we're covering lesson number four of the entire free course. Remember, guys, we're giving you this whole Tubono course completely for free. So make sure you watch the video up until the end. This is good job, mentors. Let's go. Welcome, guys and girls. Now we're gonna be looking at the market patterns that we actually look at when you look at the markets so one thing I want you guys to realize is to, you need to take clear notes and actually note down every word I'm gonna say because this is clear demonstration of how the patterns look like and how the patterns um, we actually apply them so that you can be able to see and spot these different things and different time frames and different patterns to say so without any further waste of time let's jump to it so, pattern number one, a consolidation channel. So, a consolidation channel, it looks in this nature. As we have taught you guys that there's an impulse move and a correction. We know there's an impulse move, a correction, impulse, correction, impulse, right? But however, a consolidation channel is in this sense. It's a ranging market that is going on the right hand side, sideways, right? So, this is a manner of it's either it's creating a high buy opportunity or high sell opportunity. This means that this is when the market is breathing. This is when the market is taking a break from impulses. So in this sense, guys, a consolidation channel looks something in this nature. So we would have a push to the upside and then consolidate sideways, creating a structure in a sense of a rectangle shape. As you can see, in a sense of a rectangle shape it will look something like this because the market is ranging only in between this rectangle face we know that we support low and we resist high so it will just play around this rectangle forming a continuation pattern just remember guys a consolidation channel that occurs after an impulse move and it's in a format of a rectangle shape just understand you're going to be looking for continuations to the upside or the lower side right so in that bearish market we look something in this nature we would have a push to the downside and then consolidation sideways creating the nature of a rectangle shape right there and then we know that we're going to be impulsing again if we break out to the structure to the downside as we know that the market nature it's a push to the downside correction and then push again so that's the nature of a rectangle or to say a consolidation channel so in the bullish market it will look something of this nature push to the upside correct sideways creating something in nature of a rectangle shape we know that we support low and we resist high before we actually get confirmations to push to the upside so that is what you need to look for guys but however remember something it's not always a perfect picture that you will always have with regarding the markets. You always need to read in between the lines of how is it presented. Is it presented in a shape that we're looking for continuations or is it represented in a shape that we're looking for reversals? Sometimes the consolidation channel might be in this sense. You know, we cor we're correcting sideways, but sometimes it might push up, push down, go back in the same way. So you got to look, guys. This might be acting as a head and shoulders. So be actually sure that you, sh you check on these things and dwell deeper into what's presented by the charts. So, all right, guys and girls, we're going to be looking at Euro USD. So as we said, we're looking for what? A continuation pattern, which is a consolidation channel. So without any further waste of time, let me just copy this bit of price right here. Just copy it from this sense and then put it right there. And then as we copy it aside, you're going to be able to read in between the lines. As you can see, this was an impulse move. This was a correction, as you can see. And then impulse again now we're having a correction as you can see it's pretty clear to understand these things so now we're gonna spot our rectangle shape what do we do we don't see any in between these lines but however i'm seeing some bit of price right here let's just go to a four hour time frame as we drop it to a bit lower time frame i want you guys to see something or spot something so we actually having a bit of price right here right as we having a bit of price right here, remember i said you gotta be able to read in between the lines of what's presented by the charts as we can look closely here this is a correction in a phase of a rectangle shape but however look at what's happening it didn't continue to the downside but however it reversed to the upside look what happened if we look closer to the market we had something in nature of a head and shoulders 
but however it's not quite presentable that is why we say it's important for you to read in between the lines right so you can see that it already pushed up but imagine if we had a high push to the downside and then we corrected to the lower side it's, it was going to be actually a nice way to actually say this is an opportunity for us to look for continuations but however let's look at the better price so as you look at the better price guys you're going to see that this is in nature of a rectangle shape right and in nature of a rectangle shape inside we also experiencing some patterns within as you can see we're experiencing some patterns within and also here we're experiencing some patterns within you're going to learn about these patterns guys as you delve deeper into the pattern side as you can see um, so the real nature says we have a push to the downside, correct sideways to get those confirmations before pushing to the downside. Now, this was the one that is explaining that sometimes guys doesn't open up or it doesn't look at the bigger picture or it's not presentable in a perfect picture that we are gonna be looking for continuation. But however, you just gotta be able to read in between the lines. As you can see, push, exhaustion, and then we had another push guys. It corrected again. So this is telling you guys that it's failing to break below to retest and give us continuations. But however, it's ranging in between this rectangle shape, right? So that's the failure of the consolidation channel, but not a sense of failure, but it's a possibility that you always got to look for. However, a consolidation channel occurring in a rectangle shape, it needs to be um, the one that you look for continuation patterns. But however, it's not going to be always in a clear picture. You just got to be able to read in between the lines. So now let's focus on a bit on some bit of price right here. As you can see, we having that bit of price saying um, a correction that occurs in a rectangle shape. Let's copy it and put it aside. As you can see right here, we ranging in a rectangle format. As you can see, if I copy this price right here and then just demonstrate it right here, you're gonna see you guys, this is clear, beautiful. That is why the mid time it broke to the upside, we literally continued to the upside. As you can see, this was a push to the upside and then this was a correction and then push to the upside, this is a correction, right? So these things, guys are pretty clear to look for continuations but let's look at it in the real market so as we put it right here guys you're gonna see that this was a correction format as you can see right there this was a literally a rectangle shape because we know we resisted high and supported low resisted high supported low so it failed that the meantime it broke out of the structure look what happened it literally broke out retested and continued to the upside now it's creating another format of a rectangle shape which is a consolidation channel that is ranging in between guys as you can see if you look closely inside here we're still having um, those pushes to the upside corrections and then as you can see push correction but however we're in a consolidation channel here of which we're looking for something in this nature if the market pushes up it needs to consolidate or maybe give us a correction to retest the level of support and then continue to the upside. But however, I'm definitely sure now this makes sense. A consolidation channel is something in nature of this. It creates a rectangle shape and then supports low, the equivalent as you know guys, support low and resist high before looking for continuations. So guys, that is it for the consolidation channel. Let's get deeper to the next pattern. Pattern number two, falling wedge or a rising wedge. So guys, these, are the most um, sensitive patterns to trade because they literally sometimes they are medium probable patterns. Sometimes they occur to make you profit from the market, but sometimes they occur to trap you inside the markets. But the nature of them, they would look like this. So if on a bullish market, we would look at something like a push to the upside, correction to the lower side, forming a channel that is actually going to the lower side or on the downside before actually continuing but however the nature of them guys doesn't always okay in this nature or maybe on the bearish market they would look in the sense push to the upside create a rising wedge to going to the upside it sometimes looks steepy you know like it looks steepy like a mountain or neither yeah the same as a mountain then it will push to the downside but however looking closely to it guys they might be trapful because they act in this sense so as i've said guys the reason why they are so trapful it's because they normally do these things so the market would be actually pushing to the upside and then correcting sideways going on the lower side or neither going to the support but then only to find out that this guys is acting as a trap sometimes the market prefers to do this the market would push to the upside corrects to the lower side and then continue to drop that's why we're saying these steepy ones are not the most high probable 
but they are medium probable. It doesn't mean they don't work. So the only time they would work is if the market pushed to the downside, corrects to the upside, forming a rising wedge to retest something, maybe to retest a uh, resistance or to retest um, support, right? That's how they become high probability. But normally the market would push to the upside, correct sideways, going to the lower side, forming a falling wedge for continuations to the upside, only to find out that it will break the structure that you have created, break the structure that you have created. Let me just cater for it right now. Break the structure that you have created to actually continue, go low, retest right here and drop. So that's how guys, they become so trapful. But however, we're looking for continuations when you look at this pattern, but don't just focus on what you know, focus on reading in between price action. That's the most important thing. Or maybe in the bearish market, they would look at something in this and they push to the downside, correcting, forming a rising wedge, right guys, before actually continuing. So this strategy, the best thing about it, guys, it makes you wait for the markets. Imagine if you say you sell at the current price right there, and then the market decides to go out, down, respect this level, and then continue up, break out the structure, and continue to the upside. What's going to happen? You actually set yourself um, an unnecessary losing trade. That's what I'm saying, guys. you got to read in between the lines. It becomes more clearer if it has something to retest on. So, for instance, on a bullish market, it would do this. Push to the upside, forming a falling wedge, right? And then create a structure. As you can see, create a structure. Maybe if we have a support zone right here, it might, it might most probably come back, retest and push, break out, retest on the structure that has been created above. After retesting, that's where we put in our buy stop. It triggers us, we are in profit. And then in the bearish market, it will look something in this nature. Push to the downside, forming a rising wedge, and then creating that, that pattern we're looking for. Wait for a break out, and then retest. That's when we enter, and then we're gonna be in profits. We gotta say reading in between the lines because reading in between the lines will help you to spot these breakouts and retests to know for co to spot continuations to the downside. But however, this is a continuation pattern, guys, and don't make it your main priority because it normally doesn't work. It works most probably 60% of the time, but it's a pattern that we needed to share. It doesn't mean it doesn't work, guys. It literally works, but it's just that medium probable pattern to trade a rising wedge or a falling wedge so let's look at the real markets to actually see and spot these things all right guys and girls we're going to be looking at gbp usd so on gbp usd we actually seeing something in nature of what we have already spoken about remember guys i said to you a falling wedge is comes from a bullish market right look at here what happened here we had a push to the upside right and then correction going on the lower side forming that uh, falling wedge and then it continued to go up now let's look at what happened after that right what happened after that look what happened the market literally pushed to the upside and then created a bigger picture of a falling wedge but it never went to the upside that is what guys i said be careful about it sometimes catches you on the wrong side of the market look what happened when the market literally created this structure when the market literally created this structure right here as you can see literally created this structure look what happened it literally caught a lot of people on the wrong side of the market but if you are able to read in between the lines you wouldn't be able to spot that this was a fake out to catch people on the wrong side of the market but what do we do remember guys i taught you about evolving a meeting markets right literally a, a meeting um trend line so if you put it right there you're gonna be able to spot this was actually a trapful pattern to say because what happened a falling wedge or cares in a sense to respect or to say to confirm continuations to the upside the same way it did right here as you can see this was a falling wedge right here right here it was a falling wedge as you can see right there guys it was a falling wedge it was going to the lower side but look it went on the lower side to respect the structure can you see that this was a lower structure guys this was a resistance it broke out came retest to respect the support and what i said is it only becomes high probable if it has something to retest these had nothing to retest right as you can look close if we drag it to the next side it literally respected the previous support zone as you can see there's a support zone over here it supported over here but however it also had something to respect at the top right there 
as we can see that is why it failed to literally break to the upside but actually trap people on the wrong side of the market to, to tell them that we're looking for continuations but however it wasn't guys a continuation that is what i'm saying these patterns are literally one of the most sensitive because you gotta be careful how you trade them you're not just gonna trade them for the sake of having trades running you gotta be careful because they are most trapful guys right so we have looked at the falling wedge now we looked at the at the beautiful side of it and then on the trapful side of it this was a beautiful side of it a push to the upside correction forming a falling wedge and then it continued now this was the triple one push to the upside correction trapping people on the wrong side of the market and then it dropped this guy was a drastic drop if you can look closer it was a drastic drop so that's how we trap people on the wrong side of the market so let's look at another different pair okay guys now we're going to be focusing on usd cat so we have already explained how a falling wedge looks like now it's time to explain how the rising wedge looks like so a rising wedge guys occurs in this sense so we're just gonna copy a bit of price right here as you can see i said a rising wedge occurs better if it has something to retest right so a rising wedge is in this sense so as i see it let's just copy a bit of price right here right before let's just copy this bit of price put it right there and then just make a sample about it as you can look closely i said the nature of a rising wedge it will look in this nature push to the upside correction towards the upside and then looking for continuations to the lower side however it's not always picture perfect because these patterns sometimes can trap you so as you can see we had the first rising wedge over here and then we had the second right here We had the second right here and then these were normal consolidation or rectangle patterns as we can see so we are not there so these ones became the most high probable remember i said when it comes to these patterns you gotta be able to read in between the lines it has to have something to retest so as you can see the reason why it turned right there it has something to retest we had a push to the upside as you can see from here push to the upside correction forming a double top formation push to the downside correction forming a rising wedge to create a triple top right there and then it pushed to the lower side came back had something to retest push to the downside so guys this was the most beautiful one to spot a rising wedge needs to have something to retest push to the downside correction upside and then something to retest actually what a resistance zone as you can see retest the resistance zone before actually pushing to the lower side however a rising wedge and a falling wedge they are both for continuation patterns on a bullish market we're looking for a falling wedge on a bearish market we're looking for a rising wedge so let's let, let's just look at the a bit of price right here that was most trapful so guys now we have found a bit of price which we're gonna copy this one and right there just put it lower side right here so guys let's look at this price to actually make sense so the trapful side about a rising wedge it occurs in this nature remember the nature of it it looks like this push to the downside correction to the upper side to retest something before actually continuing but however in this strategy we look we use stops we don't use market execution but sometimes we do use market execution but not always though but yeah you're gonna learn about these on the entry lesson so what happens when we're looking for this bit of price so as you can see right here guys we had a rising wedge from the push to the upside right and then when you had a rising wedge we always have something to retest on but however this is where evolving comes in look what happened in the real markets we had a push to the downside obviously creating a rising wedge imagine if you were to sell right here the market was going to be trickling 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 it kicks you out then you're out of the trade and then you start saying ah the market doesn't respect my setups the market doesn't favor me and etc but you just gotta be able to read in between the lines so the rising wedge at the trapful side about it it does it occurs in this nature so the market had a push to the downside correction on the upper side forming a rising wedge but however look what happened on that rising wedge the market literally created a correction within a correction so this was a correction it also created a correction and remember the market if it trickles a lot it tells you that it's forming a different structure that is why guys we needed to evolve look what happened these could have trapped people in the wrong side of the market but if you read in between the lines you are going to be able to spot that now it's creating a falling wedge which turns this rising wedge an impulse and then this is a correction so you're going to learn also about 
how the market price action tends to tweak or change so if this was an impulse move and then this correction also correct in a corrective format forming another correction with the correction this was a correction but now we're actually forming another correction which becomes more confusing to actually learn how to read in between the lines but as i said the only way you can do this is you being able to read in between the lines so as we read in between the lines we were going to be able to spot that okay guys so now our trend line to support our rising wedge failed right as it failed we need to what to evolve right evolving or emitting structures as you can see right there this failed this means now guys we needed to evolve to put our structure right here now it created what we can see it created a bigger picture of a rising wedge so this is a bigger picture of a rising wedge push the downside and correction to the sideways push the downside correction it broke out came back to retest and dropped that is why guys i said to you it's important to look at the breakout for it to be hyperbole the breakout needs to be impulsive to have a retest but if, if ever it breaks out correctively it's telling you that now nah, the prices are literally changing as you can see right here guys the push was on the downside it corrected sideways but however in these correction it literally broke out the structure correctively telling us it's changing in price creating another format of a pattern which is what a falling wedge now this correction turns into an impulse this was an impulse this was a correction that continued to the upside that is what's the importance of reading in between the lines remember guys read in between the lines that's going to help you to understand the evolving and the emitting of patterns so that's it for the rising and falling wedge patterns guys let's get deeper to a different pattern so we're going to be looking at the third patterns which is a descending and ascending channels so these ones guys are the most high probable patterns to use or the patterns to look at the markets because they present the high opportunity of capitalizing from the markets guys these are the most favorite and you must include them in your trading plan but now let's focus on the nature of them so the nature of them they would look like this so on a descending channel we will look something of this nature the market will push to the downside and then correct also to the downside the reason why these patterns okay to the downside or corrections okay to the downside it's because these act as a confirmation for either reversals or continuations but in this sense is reversals so the reason why is a reversal guys remember when prices are about to continue they literally would correct sideways but sometimes when the correction occurs going to a structure or approaching the lower side or the upper side as we i'm explaining now a descending channel they act as part to tell you that the prices are now oversold right here because this is a what this is in descending channel right as this is a descending channel it literally looks something of this nature this is when we are looking at the bearish market right so they would literally push to the downside right correct sideways actually go into the lower side also imagine how can you push to the downside but also correct to the downside it's a confirmation of a reversal pattern this means that the prices have been oversold now looking at the bullish market it will look something in this nature the market will push to the upside correct to the upside because it's telling us now the prices are literally overbought so this is why these things okay or these patterns okay to tell us that now the market has been overbought to actually look for what reversals but it depends on what the market is actually approaching with these corrections actually it needs to approach a zone which is a resistant zone for you guys to be able to spot that retest right and then break out retest and continue to the downside that's on a bullish market so now let's focus on the real market for these patterns to make sense as we're looking at usd jpy so we're going to be able to spot these things guys remember i told you that there's inner structures outer structures etc so you're going to be able to spot and learn about these things guys especially when it comes to the real market so let's just copy a bit of price and create our outer structure right there to know what we're looking for inside the market so let's create our outer structure right there and drop it to a lower time frame which is a four hour time frame so you dropped it to a lower time frame which is a four hour time frame you're going to be able to spot these things as i said we have what ascending channel so the market will literally correct towards the upside so let's look closely to the bit of price right 
So let's look right here, guys. It's gonna make sense. So these patterns also have those trapful side about them. But however, they become most high probable if you focus on read off reading in between the lines. So let's look at this a bit of price right there. So you can see this was what? An ascending channel. As you can see, this was an ascending channel. The market had pushed to the upside, but started correcting towards the upside, which retested the previous high, which is our what? Our resistance right there. And then look what happened when it literally reached this level. After breaking out, retesting at this level, it really dropped to the downside. And then it created another ascending channel to form a double top right there and respect the previous high and then it finally dropped to the lower side so that's a an ascending channel so a descending channel will look something in this nature the market had a push to the downside as you can see and then it corrected towards the lower side after it broke out it came back to retest and then it shooted up right so you can see let's look closely to what's actually happening look at this bit of price right here now let's cater for it as if we're looking for a signal as you can see we're gonna cater for these at many touches literally confirm a high probability so as you can see over here this was a descending channel which came to retest the support zone and literally it shooted up as you can see boom it went up and then it came back right that's for a descending channel so let's look at another examples guys remember the more, the more the examples the higher understanding you will have so let's look at the current market right here on what's happening on the current prices as you can see we literally had a push to the downside on this price action boom to the downside and then the market started now correcting towards the lower side which gave us a confirmation of a reversal that's why the market literally pushed up corrected and continued to the upside that was because it was a falling <clears throat> that was because it was a descending channel that's why i'm saying these ones guys are actually one of the most high probability patterns to trade because they confirm reversals right so as you, let's drop it to a one hour time frame it will make sense so as you can see if we cater for these patterns, you're gonna be able to spot that why did these become a high probability trade? So you spot these things, you're gonna be able to see that we formed a descending channel over here. This is a descending channel within a descending channel. As you can see also over here, we're having a nature of a descending channel to support our descending channel, push to the upside, retest, and continuation so guys these are the most important expert factors you need to understand and literally look at so if you look at the current market price what's happening right here it's a what this is an ascending channel an ascending channel as you can see the outer structure on a one hour time frame would be something in this nature the prices had the first touch second touch and the third touch right so it had these touches it confirms to us what we're going to be looking for something different as you can see if you drop it to a 30 minutes time frame you're going to be able to spot that at this current level we created a nature of an ascending channel right this was an ascending channel that literally when the market broke out of the structure it literally dropped that is why guys we say these are the most high probable it only depends on what is approaching but as you can see this was a what a resistant structure that was why it came to retest and literally dropped so these ones guys are the most high probable and guys we literally love these patterns if you learn and practice them guys after this lesson you need to go back test back test these patterns you're gonna be able to master them but let's now look at a, another bit of price as you can see we also had our support right here as you can look closely here guys we needed we had a push to the downside as you can see but now we corrected sideways to form a descending channel that literally when the market broke out we actually continued to the upside and also here we formed an ascending channel of which when the market reached the top we actually dropped so these guys are the most high probable an ascending channel occurs in a bullish market to retest a resistance zone or to confirm a double top a descending channel comes from a bearish market whereby we will have a push to the downside correct to the lower side to retest a support zone break out the structure retest and continue to the upside that is the difference between an ascending channel and a descending channel an ascending channel 
it's on a bullish market the descending channel it's on a bearish market so let's go to the next pattern pattern number four expanding channels or expanding patterns so these ones guys are also one of the most high probable trades and literally we can capitalize from them a lot because this is when the market is now starting to create a bigger picture of a pattern do you get what i'm saying so it's actually that structure that creates a bigger version of a pattern so the nature of it they would look like this on the bearish market the market will push to the downside and then correct sideways starting from small prices expanding to create bigger version of a correction so they would look in this nature on a bearish market right so they will look in this nature on a bearish market it creates an expanding channel remember expanding guys means enlargement of things so expanding channel is when the prices are creating a bigger version of a pattern and then on a and then on a bullish market it will look something in this nature a bullish market it will push to the upside and then start small and actually create a bigger version of a pattern of which it's going to look something of this nature because it's a nature of it so the most important thing guys is to be able to read in between the lines so this is one is the bearish market and this is for the bullish market so the trick side about it is that you can either choose to use a bit of both in a sense that you can also use market execution and you can also use stops but in a bigger time frame we don't prefer using stops or maybe orders we prefer using executions on smaller time frames then on a bigger picture we actually look at how is the prices moving at the current state so the most important thing guys is that these patterns can either okay on a bigger time frame or a lower time frame if they okay on a bigger time frame it becomes a high probability for you to use market execution because when you drop it to a bit lower time frame you're going to be able to spot patterns within patterns of which sometimes they look in this type of nature so in a bearish market this will be the push to the downside as we explained push to the downside correction creating a bigger version of a pattern but then for continuations it will literally push to the downside and then correct towards the upside to respect the previous zone in this nature right correct in this nature to create a virgin to retest the level and create maybe a double top formation on a bearish market remember a bearish market something like this we would actually know is that reading in between the lines or the key factors of the market we would know that it will be most high probable to literally wait for the prices to break out of the structure right here come back to retest before actually going short and capitalizing from this trade before actually going short to capitalize from this trade in completion of the expanding channel because we know the prices immediately they come here they respect they come here they respect they come here they respect so we anticipate that since well this is a correction the prices are also going to respect to confirm a double top formation before actually giving us a clear version of the lower side so that's the most important key factor to understand on these especially on the bearish market on an expanding channel so let's look on how the bullish market would look like so in a bullish market the prices would push to the upside and then expand creating a bigger version of a correction but then the lower side now when approached they will trickle a lot trickling means when prices are giving small moves to respect a structure as you can see this would be an expanding because you look closely to it right there and also we are also supporting there at the lower zone and then within it we also have a pattern of which is in this nature we have a pattern of which is in this nature as you can see we would literally wait for the market to actually break out of this structure right here and then give us a clear version of a push to the upside break out retest before actually looking for our buying opportunities to capitalize from this trade and then push to the upper zone because we have understood that every time prices touches these lines they literally respect a lot every time they try the they retest they respect a lot so especially now that we have a double confirmation that we have a support zone which has been respected and then we have a correction phase that we have been going through when prices were creating 
um, a trickling movement where there is no high volatility. Remember, guys, on an expanding channel, if it's only impulse moves, that's when you're going to be able to look for breakouts and actually trade a bigger version of it. But if ever the prices are, co are creating corrections within the expanding channel, you can capitalize from that. But now let's look at the real market for these patterns to make sense. So guys, we're going to be looking at GBP USD for an example of an expanding channel on a bearish market. So on a bearish market, you can see guys, we're just going to take prices back from here. As you can see, you're going to learn how to use this replay button once you have subscribed with trading view. So let's just cut prices right there and then just come back here. So this is the bigger version. Remember what I said that on a bigger time frames, it confirms that you can capitalize within those small movements. So if we cater for the outer structure, we can see that this was the resistance and then below this was the support, right? And below this was the support, right? Let's just take it a bit back right there. And this was the support. So let's drop it to a four hour time frame. If we drop it to a lot of time frame, you're going to see, guys, I said the nature of it will have a push to the downside, start small, but already creating a bigger version of a pattern. So this was a bigger version of a pattern. But you can see within there, we're experiencing what? We're experiencing patterns. This was pattern number one, which is what? A rising wedge. This was pattern number two, which is an, a rising wedge also. And then this was pattern number three, which is an ascending channel to form and, and confirm a what? A double top formation. So guys, you're gonna learn. You've gonna learn to fall in love with the markets once you master these things. So that's why I'm saying you need to back test, read in between the lines, right? Sometimes these pairs or these patterns literally help each other for you to create a high probability setup for yourself. So this is an expanding channel. So what's gonna happen right here? I'm gonna cater for the lower zone right here because we are looking at the current market price, right? As you can see, this as an expanding channel, I wouldn't wanna wait for a breakout to break out of this current zone because it's going to be a high risk. Imagine guys, if I enter this trade and then my stop loss, let me say I enter here and then my stop loss needs to be 300 pips. Guys, we don't trade like that. We have small risk, but bigger targets. So in this nature, this is what I'm going to be looking for. This was the first touch, second touch, and now we are waiting for the dead touch. Let's play prices a bit further, a bit further. Now the price has literally respected the level. Now it's time to now spot where we're going to put our sell stop. So we're going to say the prices have reached the top, which might be our third touch. So we're going to be looking for a breakout, which means we're going to put our sell stop right here. You know, we're going to put our sell stop right there. But then let's drop it to a one hour time frame for it to make sense. So if you drop it to a bit lower time frame, it's going to give us a clear version of where to put our sell stop. Because the lower the time frame, the bigger picture or the bigger um version you have of the setup you are looking for or the pattern you're looking for so as you can see it's patterns within patterns also within this expanding channel we also experiencing something in nature of an ascending channel so you can see first touch second touch third touch confirmation right and then we're gonna say we're waiting for prices to break out this structure and then we're gonna put our stop loss right there to wait for the prices to go a bit lower up until that level and let's look closely to what's happening so let's pre-plies as we played further, you can see the prices are starting to drop quite nicely, right? So it dropped quite, we are triggered in. Now, as you can see, we are triggered in the price. We are having a pattern within a pattern, which is an expanding channel, but within it, we spotted a pattern, which is an ascending channel. Now let's capitalize from it. As you can see, as we play prices, they're starting to respect. They push lower, they push lower, they, pre they keep trickling. Now, this is what we call the rectangle pattern that I've shown you that guys, after a breakout, we expect the correction to confirm or create high influence of buyers and sellers to literally tell or push the market towards the anticipated direction. So as you played further, you're going to see it's starting to respect. You see, starting to respect, starting to respect, starting to respect, starting to respect. As you can see, it's creating a bigger version of a correction. But however, we're still in within this trade, guys. Imagine you could have held this thing up until when. As you can see, you are profiting from it. We are profiting from it. Profiting, profiting, profiting. So when the market has now reached this point, that is when we guys tend to put our stop loss on break even to protect profits because we don't like taking unnecessary profits within to the markets. So it's important to, to secure your profits and literally put them safe. So we're just going to play this thing. 
as you can see it keeps on playing keeps on playing keeps on playing we are capitalizing from this trade guys imagine we could have held this and literally profited from it for quite a lot if you can look closely how much have we banked right now let's just pause the price action so we could have banked ourselves one percent of let me see one percent point twelve but our stop loss is on break even now let's drop it a bit lower to this zone right so now our stop loss is now here right our stop loss is now here so let's play it further to see what happens so as you play it further you're gonna see guys we are capitalizing from that trade a lot because why we read in between the lines so when the price does this again we're gonna see that this is also a correction right and what do we do on corrections you're gonna learn about scaling in also guys how we scale in within the market by reading in between price action we're gonna also enter the trade right there i'm gonna also enter the trade right there have a bit lower risk right there and then wait for prices to actually play within right as we wait for prices you're gonna see it breaks out no it didn't trigger us in it triggers us in now and then it continues to go down you see guys we could have capitalized imagine we're still holding that trade and also holding this one so we capitalized from the trade now let's go to a bigger version as we go to the bigger version you're gonna be able to spot that right here we had our support zone of which you're expecting prices to reach this level so let's now now we let's secure profits we put in our stop loss right here and then we drop this one right here now we have on the first trade we have one percent point 48 and then on the second trade we have already secured some bit of profit and then as we played further it keeps on playing and respecting our setup can you see that guys now this is how we actually swing trades by reading in between the lines of expanding so even on an expanding on a bullish market it will look something in this sense the same way as we look at it in a bearish market they would look the same so as you can see this is a clear vision of how to trade an expanding channel on a bigger version but sometimes it actually occurs on small versions and actually it creates something in this nature push to the downside correction creating an expanding channel that you just gotta put yourself stop below and put your stop loss above and then when it breaks out it triggers you in and you're gone but that's the nature of it but if ever it's in a bigger time frame you gotta be look to capitalize in between the lines you gotta look at patterns within patterns so that is it guys for an expanding channel now let's look at the next pattern hello guys and girls what's good this is fx code your mentor welcome to the fx code advanced new market strategy guys this one is going to be one of the bombest that you have ever experienced so guys without any further waste of time let's jump to the true principles of what the strategy implies the nature theory of the strategy the market moves in phases we all know that right impulsive phase and a correction phase these market phases create higher highs which is h h and then create higher lows which is h l and also they create lower highs which is an l and h and also lower lows which is l and l but guys note something and b the market doesn't move impulsively only there are always corrections within the price movement or volatility you must practice these faces so that they be registered in your subconscious mind it's important guys they'll be easy for you to apply that's the nature theory of what the strategy implies about guys you need to understand the nature theory about the impulsive moves and the corrections together with the formations or the structures that the market is literally presenting to us so let's get back to the real markets to show you the true facts about what we mean by the nature theory of the market now guys as we jump deeper into the charts you can be able to see I'm going to explain quite deeper what we actually mean about the market theory, right? We're going to be looking at Euro USD. So what we mean by the nature of the market is that we know that the market needs to have an impulse move, a correction, which in the nature is forming something like a pattern and then another push to the upside or neither to the downside. So it's all about understanding the market nature on what it presents, right? So let's look deeper into what's happening at the current state. As you look at this bit of price, let's just copy it from here right and then drag it right there copy it aside right 
As we literally look closely to this, guys, you're going to see what we spoke about, the market nature. We know after every impulse move, there has to be a correction, an impulse move, a correction, right? So, guys, the market becomes more beautiful because we understand that after every push, there's always needs to be an exhaustion. Prices can be overbought or oversold. We only need to understand the market nature that after every impulse move, we need to expect a correction. Corrections are phases whereby the market moves in slight candlesticks or to say moves sideways to show that the prices are literally breathing. They're taking a break from their impulse moves. So, sometimes it happens that the market corrections confirm continuations or confirm reversals. So that's what we're going to be dwelling deeper into the strategy. We're going to be teaching you guys how to read in between the lines by literally understanding the pushes and exhaustions or to say the impulse move and corrections for continuations or for reversals. So let's focus on a bit of price right here for it to make sense. So as we copy the price aside, you're going to see something guys as you can look this was an impulse move to the upside and then this was a this was a correction as you can see right here impulse move correction right so let's cater for that bit of price so that it can make sense so as you can see here we had something in nature of a falling wedge or to say a descending channel so in other words we say as you can see over here at the top also we're also seeing something in nature of an ascending channel so these guys are literally patterns that you're going to learn within the strategy as we proceed with the lesson but however we just wanted to make sure that guys you understand the market theory or the nature of it that after every impulse move we need to expect a correction for continuation or either for reversals so it also happens on a bearish market so in a bearish market it happens in this sense so in a bearish market the prices would literally push to the downside correct sideways to really form something in nature of continuations to the downside or either form something in nature of reversals so that's the nature of it we know that guys after every push we need to expect a correction so corrections in this strategy is one of the most important things that we need to focus on because that's how we capitalize on the markets right the reason why we capitalize on corrections because you don't want to be caught up on the wrong side of the market especially entering prices or entering a trade on impulse moves because that's going to actually trap you on the wrong side of the market the main goal it's all about being profitable but not being a market chaser so that's it for the market theory guys you know push exhaustion or correction and then continuation or maybe push exhaustion which is correction and then reversal right so that's what we need to understand that is how the market nature is presented so let's get back to the lesson so guys now we're going to be focusing on the market structures market structures are the overall view of a market direction we have two types of the market structures which is the outer structures and also the inner structures these two types will help you easily read the markets right as you know guys the outer structure we're looking at the overall bigger picture of what the market is presenting to us but the inner structures we're looking for far most deeper depth of what's actually happening within price action let's get to see in the real market what we actually mean so guys we're going to be making an example looking at gbp usd which is pound dollar right so in pound dollar we're going to literally determine the outer structures before we actually determine the inner structures so in this sense do you need to understand the fact that the outer structures we're looking at the bigger picture what needs to be in a weekly time frame or either a daily time frame what's the bigger picture telling us are we on a bearish trend or neither are we on a bullish trend so let's cater for the outer structures so as you can see right here guys we have an outer structure on a weekly time frame that has been respected quite a lot guys as you can see this was a trend which was resisting prices every time the prices reaches this level they normally turn so as you can see also over here guys there is some kind of a trickling price action which means the prices keep moving up down up down without any direction whether are we impulsing to the downside or neither are we impulsing to the lower side or are we correcting so by understanding those key factors this is going to make you understand and the importance of literally having the bigger picture before dwelling deeper into the lower structures so as you can see at the top right there we have an overall structure which is a resistance and below it we can cater for here as this would be our outer support which is a bigger picture guys now the bigger picture of it as you can see from this current moment we had an impulse move correction right impulse move correction 
impulse, correction, impulse. Now the price is formed another pattern within a pattern. You're going to learn about that as we move forward uh, into with this lesson, the patterns within patterns. So as you can see, this was an overall pattern, but however, we also have the inner structures, which is the inside patterns we experienced. Now we had a push. Again, this was an inner structure. We had a push again, and then this was also an inner structure. We had a push, inner structure, the push again, inner structure. So you're going to understand the key factors of this, guys, once we proceed with the lesson quite a lot, because it's going to help you to literally determine the opportunities within this once you understand a bigger picture. Remember, we all normally say that never go against the trend because the most focus needs to be more on, guys, you need to understand what are you looking for when you enter into a price action? Are you looking for selling opportunities or neither are you looking for buying opportunities? You wouldn't want to buy on a selling opportunity or you wouldn't want to sell on a buying opportunity. So that's vice versa. Let's go deeper into a lower time frame for you to see the inner structures. So we are in a daily time frame right now. So as we made an example, guys, at first that there's going to be structures within structures or patterns within patterns. So as you can see, we have an overall bearish triangle right now, which was contracting, squeezing price action within. Now, as you can look quite closely here, guys, this was also a pattern within a pattern, right? As you can look right there, remember, the bigger the time frame, the high confluence it has towards your analysis. The high probability, it tells us that, guys, this is literally what's happening within the charts. We need to focus on it and literally pro profit from it. So as you can see right there, this was an inside structure. But also, if you look closely inside the structure, we have structures within structures within structures. So as you can see, this was a structure right there, which was a pattern in that sense. So we also had a pattern here. And also we had another pattern right there. So guys, the minute you learn these things, you're going to be able to read in between the lines of prior action. It's very, very important, guys, that you need to understand these things. Remember, we normally said the market nature says after every push, there's always an exhaustion. So in a weekly time frame, there was a push to the downside, and then this was an exhaustion. But however, within this daily time frame, we also have impulse moves and corrections. So let's go on a four-hour time frame to break down the daily time frame structures. So as we are in a four hour time frame right now, you're going to be literally able to see what's happening within price action. So as I said, guys, within this bit of price that we copied right here, there's going to be patterns within patterns within patterns. So as you can look closely, let's just say, guys, at this bit of price, right? Starting from over here, you're going to see that within this price, there was literally also actions that happened within there. As you can see, we had another ascending channel over here, another ascending channel over here, another ascending channel over here. And guys, like these things are pretty important. As you saw, the minute it broke out of this structure, it came back to retest forming a pure, beautiful bullish channel or a bullish trend or a bullish pattern of which you're going to learn from it as the strategy continues. As you see, it literally pushed to the upside far more till that point. So these guys, guys, are the key factors you need to understand that will make you high profitable and understand the market nature. You need to understand how the market works for you to be able to know how to read between the lines and be able to take high quality trades. So this is what we need guys by structures. So we have the outer structures and then we have the inner structures. As you know, the outer structures is what happens on a bigger time frame. The inner structures are what happens between lower time frames. So guys, let's get back to the lesson. Impulse and correction phases. An impulse move is one whereby the market moves quite strong or heavily in or on a direction, covering a greater distance in a short period of time. These moves tell you when the imbalance between the buyers and sellers is really strong. And there is a heavy participation from the intuitional side of traders. Logically, they are generally more volatile and this provides us with great opportunities for more rewards with less risk since the market will stretch more easily in one direction. But guys, remember this, no matter what, we want to be trading with these moves as much as possible, but let's not go against them. So let's delve deeper into the charts, guys, for you to understand the impulse and corrections. So guys, we're going to be focusing on USD CAD to explain the impulse and correction. So in the bigger picture, this is what we're looking for. This was an impulse move to the downside, and then this was a correction. 
This was an impulse move. Now this was a correction. But guys, within this correction, you can literally see that there were impulses and corrections, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, breakout with an impulse correction so the minute you understand this market nature guys it's pretty simple like you're gonna even laugh with the charts and be like no bro you literally showing me an impulse move and a correction then that's when you fall in love with the markets it's pretty simple so this was an impulse move as i said this was a correction forming a bearish flag in a bigger picture and then literally dropped to the door side forming another pattern right here literally push to the sideways and impulse to the upside so let's literally dwell deeper into a lower time frame for you to understand so if you drop it to a bit lower time frame, you're going to be able to see the guys that sometimes the there's what we call trickling. Trickling is literally when the market goes on one side for the longest time. It can be a lot of days. It can be weeks. It can be hours or neither. It can be minutes. So in this instance, you're going to be able to spot that guys, this we trickled for quite a lot of times because this is in a daily time frame, right? As you can see guys, this was literally, we trickled quite a lot. But within this trickling pattern, you're going to be able to spot that within there, we had patterns within patterns. As you can see, this was a pattern within a pattern. And then also right here, this was also a pattern right here, which was an ascending type of nature. That's why the market literally, when they broke down, literally fell up until this point. And then we also had something in nature of a correction right here, of which you're going to understand these things, guys, as we proceed with the strategy. So as you can see right there, so it's this guys, when you're able to read in between the lines, you're going to be able to profit from the market. So explaining the impulse and correction phase. So this was an impulse. Then this was a correction. This was an impulse. This was a correction, right? So you can see trickled a lot. Impulse, correction, impulse, correction, impulse. Then this was a correction right impulse again correction now the impulse so you're going to understand this type of natures guys which is going to help you to profit from the markets quite a lot so taking it to the better price explaining it in a sideways format you're going to be able to spot that in a white chart the nature of impulse move looks like this this is one candlestick or a lot of candlestick pushing harder to the downside correcting sideways which forming a correction phase then impulse again or neither it can look like this push to the upside correction forming something of this nature before actually pushing again so impulse moves guys are literally those big movements that occur within the markets and then corrections are those small faces that occur where the market has been ranging in between two prices but never breaks out or never exceeds or never decreases so that's the correction phase so in the nature of the market this is how it would look like right as we shift it right here you're going to be able to spot that guys here this what this is a correction phase right here as we can see the market literally pushed harder to the downside but now this is a correction phase of which the market is now starting to go sideways without any further direction that is giving us because if you look closely this is what we're facing right now we're having a resistance at the top and then we're having a support at the lower zone but however guys remember i said the strategy you're going to learn how to use zones and also use the ray line i prefer far most the ray line because it works uh, greater with the strategy so as you can look closely guys this is what actually happening right now so this was an impulse move to the downside now it's correcting that is why it's going sideways remember in this instance we say at the low we support at the above we resist so that's it for impulse move and corrections let's dwell deeper to our lesson Continuing with impulse move and correction. In other words, what we mean by this is, guys, in impulse move and corrections, we have pullbacks or retracement is relatively short term movements of the markets in a direction opposite to the main trend. A correction will be a bearish or <clears throat> a correction will be a bearish in a bullish trend, while in a bearish trend, a correction will be bullish. Correct <clears throat> corrections as the <clears throat> corrections emerges as the market gets either overbought or oversold. This can be seen from reading in between the lines of price action. In addition, there is so-called horizontal correction, which also is referred as sideways market range. It, is, <clears throat> it takes place when demands for a certain asset or its supply balances each other out, right? So these things, guys, are the pure things that you need to understand the pure characteristics of what's within impulse and correction when a correction is over the price return to the initial trend newbies are often advised not to trade counter the main trend as 
Such aggressive trading requires experience and psychological resilience. So that's it for impulse and correction. Now, moving to emitting or evolving of trends, basically. This is whereby, guys, you need to understand the importance of not forcing trends. This is whereby you go with the market flow by not forcing trends, catering for the most recent touches and not drawing in between candlesticks. The secret is, as long as it presents two touches, just know it's a high probability. But guys, for it to make sense about what is evolving or emitting trends, let's get deeper to the charts. So guys, as you can see, let's look at it. USD JPY right now will be a pure example to use the evolving type of nature. So evolving doesn't mean guys, for an instance, let me just make an example. When you draw a trend from here to that point, literally crossing over other candlesticks, guys, it's literally wrong. You need to cater for the most recent touches. If it's two touches, it becomes a high probability. If it's three touches, it confirms to be an area of sensitivity. So making an example covering the overall picture we have, we are actually on USDJPY looking or maybe we are ranging in between a bearish trend. So in this instance, you need to understand that guys, catering for the lower zone, we are also looking for something that merges the upper zone, which is what? Our resistance. Now let's drill deeper into what's happening within the outer structure we have built right here on a daily time frame. So on a daily time frame, guys, I'm going to literally show you something that's literally important to understand about the nature of evolving or to say the nature of emitting price action. So we're going to take a bit of price, just cut it right there. Right. So let's look at what's happening currently. Now, guys, it's, this is a replay mode. So in a replay mode, it allows us to literally look at the bigger picture of the market. So literally, we're going to be playing this for quite a lot. So let's drill deeper into what's happening. So overall, guys, as you can see from here, let's just say this is a real, this is basically a real market. So I wouldn't draw a pattern from here. But however, I'd literally cater these two touches. But however, focus more on what's happening when the prices are literally breaking out. Are we breaking out impulsively or correctively, right? So those are the natures you need to understand. But in this instance, this bit of price right here, we are breaking out correctively. Correctively means what? There's high chance for prices to form another pattern. So as you can look closer to it, this is basically, guys, an inverse head and shoulders. You're gonna learn about it as the price, <clears throat> you're gonna learn about it as the lesson goes by. As you can see, this was a head and shoulders. Now, we're anticipating price to reach that topest point, which is this current area, right? As you can see right there, we're looking at head and shoulders. So for me, in this instance, I'll say, I'm looking for buying opportunities. What do I do? I don't just dwell deeper into charts. I need to literally understand what the prices are telling me. Let's go to a four hour time frame. As we go on a four hour time frame, you're gonna be able to spot that we're starting to form a trend. In this instance, a trend would look something of this nature. So we know guys that we buy low and then we sell high, but within this pattern, we also having other patterns within. So let's actually look at what the price action would tell us. Remember, we are playing this as if now we're entering a trade. So as we move it forward, you're going to see as we move forward, as we move forward, as we move forward, the prices clearly don't make sense because they are ranging sideways. But however, FX gold being FX gold, we will be able to spot that this is forming a correction phase. Right? What do we do in the correction phase? We look for, for opportunities to enter the market. So for us, in this instance, we'll be definitely looking for buying opportunities. Right? But we don't use market execution with this strategy. It allows you to wait for prices to come to you. So as we literally go deeper into what's happening right now, let's play it a bit further for it to make sense. So the prices keep trickling. As you can see, guys, right now we are not yet triggered in. We are not yet triggered in the prices keep trickling. So this is where now evolving comes in. Instead of drawing this trend line below or above, I'll actually emit the trend line to cater for the most recent touches, which will be the topics of that point and also expanding to see if it's creating a different pattern or it's continuing to respect the one that we literally drew. But what do you see? It's literally creating another pattern. So let's wait a bit a second to actually understand the price action. 
so in this instance we will literally wait to see what happens but however capitalizing from trades we would look for buying opportunities with the buy stop right there catering the lower zone and then looking for far most to go up <clears throat> looking far most to go to the upper zone so let's wait for it as we continue to play the price as you continue to play the price we are triggered in now do you see that guys as we are triggered in we were able to spot that now our first pattern was in the correct one we needed to evolve our trend lines putting it on the recent touches to ensure that we capitalize from the trade as we push further as you can see prices keep trickling on the lower zone keep trickling on the upper zone now they come back now they come back prices literally keep playing prices keep playing as you can see guys literally if the prices reached this level we could have put our stop loss on break even that's the most important thing so we put our stop loss on break even stop loss on break even now we know when the prices get back they triggered us into profit so as you can see the prices literally come back now now we start to what to evolve again that's where evolving comes in so we see the channel is we see now that the pattern was respected for a short term but however in completion of the previous trend or the previous high now we evolve we put our high right there we put and cater for the recent touches you see now as we evolve we're gonna see that this was our first touch second touch and this is our third touch respecting a different trend so as you can look closer to the markets you're gonna be able to spot that but now we are moving on a different trend that's the most important thing guys about evolving it teaches you not to force trends you consistently look at the different charts or to look at different patterns the far most as you go so the nature of it looking at in a white chart is going to be something in this nature we know after every impulse move there's a correction right impulse so what happens when we see a correction we're going to start now to say the market has established a new trend right which we're going to cater for this trend right there but as the market corrects within the price action people are going to anticipate that when the market reaches this point it needs to buy but however you need to be careful sometimes the market decides to break the structure or neither respect the structure but in this instance talking about evolving the market decides to push to the downside push 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 what are you gonna say are you gonna say it's a change in price action did we break out of the structure now we need to, to look for something different no focus on how the price action is breaking are we breaking out impulsively or correctively in this instance we are breaking out correctively this means that we need to evolve our structure to literally cater for the most recent touches we're gonna say from here now to there so as you see the market has might continue to do so it's telling us that it's preparing for high buying opportunity and it decides to push up a lot of people that tend to get trapped in the wrong side of the market because of having a stigma or having fixed mindset of their analysis saying if it doesn't buy here then it, it the market doesn't favor me no guys follow the market and never go against it let's get back to us so guys i hope you understand those are the key factors or the key characteristics of the new advanced fx code strategy once we learn this we're going to be able to spot good opportunities within the markets now let's delve deeper into the patterns that are included on the strategy what we look for in approach your charts guys make sure to take notes make sure you understand these patterns because guys this is the main key factor of the strategy what we just learned right now is literally the basics of what's needed for you to trade the strategy but the patterns are some things you need to know subconsciously so that every time when you see price action you're going to be able to say this is a bullish channel this is an ascending type of nature this is a bearish channel this is a descending type of nature this is an expanding channel guys you're going to learn them quite a lot fell in love with them see you on the next episode uh, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. Now, I'm going to then move my phone to portrait version. So then I'm going to zoom in and then start drawing what? Start drawing my diagonal supporting trend line. I've drew it and then I'm going to draw my diagonal resisting trend line. Yes, I've drew it again. Then from that point, you know, the second step that then I then move to is what is going to a line graph. On a line graph, that's where I then fix uh, all the mistakes and ensure that everything is what uh, is catered for.
so yes everything is catered for at this time and moment uh, i know that like uh, my uh, trend lines are exactly on point i then do it i then move to four hours to see on four hours if i was drawing a right thing or i was drawing a wrong thing then on four hours i have to do some few adjustments here i am doing few adjustments making sure that i cater exactly where my trend line uh attached what the whole overall structure so um Okay, there you have it. So from that, I then move to Japanese candlesticks and check uh, if I have my entries. But I can never have my entries before I do it, before I draw my levels. So uh, I'm seeing that there is a strong level here. And then there is another one here. Then there is another one here. Another one here. And the final one is there. Uh, is there on top. Here's the final one there. So after having my levels, I zoom in. I check whether I'm looking for continuations or I'm looking for the retest before continuations. At this time, I can already spot that I'm looking for continuations. But then I'm seeing that there is another uh, diagonal resisting trend line that I can spot here. I then draw it and I can see there is another supporting resist, uh, supporting, <clears throat> there is another supporting diagonal trend line here i can literally change the colors to make it easier for uh, our students to see that i'm now on another trend that i deem very important for you to actually know that's the reason why I have different colors so that's going to be much more easier for you to actually analyze in a better way so now i'm already seeing that the rest of the other uh, uh 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 trends are not as effective or are not as important as this one so meaning to say what <clears throat> my main focus is now gonna be on this one so i can already see that there is an important zone here of which i'm gonna highlight right now so from this important zone, I'm looking forward for reversals going to retest on this other previous zone. And then from there, I'm looking for continuations moving further up. But then there is something that is called a point of confluence of which you guys, I want you guys to get to know about that from the strategy. Point of confluence, it's where uh, all my trend lines that I've been drawing they agree to show me that there are reversals or continuations from that particular point. Uh, it forms part of the trends in trends. However, that's where I see that there's a lot of action that takes place from that point at a current situation. That actually helps me to actually do what? To do sniper entries at that time. So here, there is what we call a point of confluence here on this position because of what my main trend met up with what with my trend which is within a trend so both of those two trends they met here so here there was a high probability for what for buying opportunities and also let me continue to say there is also a high possibility for what for selling opportunities at this position here because i see that there is some that is called a point of confluence that's where the main activity that was taking place at this point 
here also we are expecting it to actually take place here that's why i'm saying i'm expecting a reversal from this point not a continuation because uh, i'm expecting it to actually do it to go down when it gets to this point and then continue moving forward uh ladies and gentlemen i'd like to take this opportunity to greet you all and welcome you to the 10 steps that you follow every time when you analyze so these are the fx code 10 uh, steps that you need to follow every time when you analyze without wasting any of your time let me start with the first step so the first step is that you move from whatever time frame that you were in to a daily time frame whichever time frame that you were in before you locked into your meta trader for is not important you then start by actually doing what by moving to a daily time frame the second step that you then follow is that you move your cell phone to a portrait orientation so that everything appears clearly what is a portrait orientation it's that horizontal way of seeing like uh, your cell phone in a horizontal man the screen becomes like much more bigger and better and easier for you to actually utilize the third step that you then follow you look for an overall direction remember you're now in portrait orientation you look for an overall direction whether it was the buys or the sells you then decide whether you are looking for bullish or bearish opportunities uh, number four, you start drawing your diagonal supporting trend line and your diagonal resisting trend line. And then the fifth step that you then follow, you move from using Japanese candlesticks to using a line chart. Number six, you, know, you fix your trend lines and make sure that everything is catered for. Number seven, you move to H4 from day one one you remember you you were on d1 now you move to h4 to do adjustments again and to ensure that everything is catered for you do these adjustments again and then you move to japanese candlesticks again to start looking for entries when you are now on step number seven on four hours that's where you start looking for entries which entries am i gonna be taking on number eight you then draw your levels or zones or your horizontal support trend line and start your resisting trend line number eight you then draw your levels or your zone your, your zones are your so-called horizontal supporting trend line and your resisting horizontal trend lines so those are your levels which are then your zones that you then start drawing number nine you decide whether you found your entries or not if you haven't you then move to a smaller time frame which is a smaller than four hours it can be uh h1 m30 to m15 your h1 means what a uh, one hour 30 minutes as well as uh, uh 15 minutes you then decide whether you have found your entries if not you then move to a smaller time frame which is smaller than four hours it can be h1 which means one hour uh, m date which means 30 minutes or 15 minutes number 10 you then move to a smaller time frame to decide where is your stop loss and your take profits